Hello and welcome to lesson one which covers biology. Uh, as you probably can see in the link that we've provided you, we've got some written information there which provides some information on the, the cricket biology, um, their preferred temperatures, uh, their general behaviour and the species. And I'll let you read that in your own time but uh, I'd probably just like to give you a couple of tips that I think are important in regards to biology. Uh, apologies for giving you the dry stuff up front but it really does form the foundation for uh, understanding how crickets breed and also overcoming a lot of the problems that um, people do get down the track. So let's cover the basics. How do you tell the difference between a male and a female cricket? Well, the first thing that you'll probably notice is that the males are the ones chirping and basically if you've got new young, young crickets and they start to, to chirp, they're at about sexual maturity or just about to become sexually mature. So yeah, just keep an ear out when you've got a whole bunch of chirping, you've, you've basically got um, adult uh, crickets. The second thing is the difference between a male and a female. Uh, the males, all three, both males and females, will actually have at the back of their abdomen uh, three spikes. And there'll be two longer ones on the outside and one in the middle. And both males and females will have those three spikes, um, but the female will actually have an additional spike in the centre which will actually be quite long. It'll actually be the longest spike, um, and that's the ovary deposit where she lays her eggs. Secondly, crickets are, are omnivorous, which means they eat animal material and plant material. Uh, so basically what you want to try to do is combine a, a really good diet which covers both. And it's got to have a good mix of, of fats and proteins and calcium for, uh, for their skin. They, they shed their skin quite regularly. Um, and yeah, so try to get something that's quite balanced. And, and our books and our training course later on will go into that. Now one of the key driving forces for a productive cricket breeding colony is constant temperature and constant moisture. And so it's probably the main reason why people fail is that over time they just are unable to maintain a schedule of spraying um, and maintaining that high moisture and high, um, high temperatures. Now the systems, we're going to go down later and down the track and explain to you how things are done conventionally, but our systems have really streamlined the process so that you, you, with very little effort you can maintain those temperatures and those moisture levels. Um, but yeah, do remember that if the eggs do dry out, your crickets will die.